Legendary cricket commentator Joseph Reds Pereira reflects on his journey so far in this feature by Sasha Ramsaran. Well, I'll make the first question simple. The only ground, grounds I haven't ever broadcast from is Bangladesh. I, I broadcast from, from all, all over Australia, all over India, where I've been three times, three times in New Zealand. I've been three times, twice to South Africa. I went to Sri Lanka once, Pakistan once. So, um, commentators, well, I worked with um, Alan McGilvery, as I said. I, I worked with Henry Blofeld. I worked with Christopher Martin Jenkins. I worked with Jim Maxwell. Um, I worked with Tim Lane. Um, I worked with an Indian commentator called Betty Sabatikari in 1971. And I can go on and, and, and go on and go on. And of course, I worked a lot with Tony Koja for about 50 years before he unfortunately passed away. Those were the words of veteran cricket broadcaster Joseph Reds Pereira, who dedicated over 50 years of his life to cricket commentary and built a successful name for himself as one of the most renowned cricket commentators of his time. After covering 145 test matches and over 300 ODIs, Pereira regards himself as lucky to have had his career and as expected, he has countless stories to tell. To start with, about how he was permanently nicknamed Reds Pereira. If you uh, see a cricketer by the name of Proctor from South Africa, you will see Proctor had flaming red hair. Well, I had that kind of red hair. And um, it started to change maybe just before I went to England in 1962. And in England, there's no sun. It became a mixture of salt and pepper. Uh, and, and eventually it became all, all salt, but it's my natural hair, I, I put nothing in it other than soap and water. The 79-year-old retired broadcaster noted that his rise to fame and success came even though he hailed from humble beginnings growing up in the Pomeroon. I grew up in the Pomeroon where there was no um, evidence then of my interests because you hardly heard radio. You know, there was no radio, there was um, no fridges, it was a very humble life. Your river was the bathroom, right? You um, paddled to go to school, you, you um, had to battle with mosquitoes and sunflies. My father was a farmer. It was a humble, clean life, you know. And uh, when eventually he, he took the family to Georgetown, I was eight years of age. And then I began to understand what the city looks like. I got asked to come to Rosal in 1961 because they heard that I was interested. British guy versus Trinidad in 1961 because, sorry, Barbados was playing Guyana. Barbados was playing Jamaica at border. So they had two matches. The border game was the best game. They sent uh, another team to Rose Hall. And that's how I started. My first first class game was right here at Rose, at Rose Hall, British Guyana versus Trinidad and Tobago. And then opportunities came. The Caribbean Broadcasting Union um, took me to the World Cup in 1975 along with Tony Cozier. But on my own, I used to travel to Trinidad and, um, you know, stay in a friend's uh, home, uh, trying to do as much, um, much commentary as possible. When asked to disclose one of his most unforgettable matches, Pereira quickly responded. Well, I think the 1950 World Cup. We were in trouble, 51 for three. Greenwich, College Run, and Fredericks out, and Can I comes out to join Lloyd, and they have a marvelous partnership. Can I get 50? Lloyd got 100. And the West Indies went on to win. Um, there is a test match in Australia where Australia needed two runs to win, and Walsh um, got McDermott caught by Murray. Um, off his bowling and Western is won by just one run and everybody had a good cry including the players <laughs> With all his years of experience Pereira disclosed that one of the greatest obstacles he overcame was his very own speech impediment 
during that time I was fighting an awful ped impediment. I stammered very badly. Mm, may I? And uh, it affected me in school and uh, it really affected my life because at 60 years of age I, I couldn't cope anymore in school. I was being laughed at. I wasn't doing as well as I could do. I was basically bright but I just couldn't get the answers out. And I started working in the British Canada Credit Corporation and uh, I kept following cricket. I used to go watch follow Case Cup cricket and I used to listen a lot to Radio Australia and I had the genuine love for it. Joseph Retz Pereira, during his early years, had served as an advisor to the Minister of Education at that time, under whose ministry fell the Department of Sport. When asked to give advice to the current sport administrators in Guyana, Mr. Pereira responded, There's the Minister of Sport, Honorable Mr. Norton. I will say, uh, continue on some of the things that he has announced. A track, a track at Linden, a track in New Amsterdam. I, I, I would like to see if it's possible. Of course, everything is sus subject to money, but maybe a cycling velodrome. Cycling has done a lot without a velodrome. Hockey has come on heaps and bounds. We've got to work on our, 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 our infrastructure. Our football fees have got to thing. But my most greatest wish a real focus on the club structure and it's got to be the associations themselves ensuring that clubs move teams move to clubs with a non-playing structure it's got to be the associations the ministry of sport and the olympic committee it must be a tripartite effort or else we will not have strong associations the old adage we clubs we produce weak associations, strong clubs, strong associations, greater mandate, better uses of money, better uses of facilities, higher quality of discipline, higher quality of standard. We need coaches' education. It's, it's, it's a long list I can assure you. The voice of Reds Pereira has been heard by avid cricket fans from around the world, and despite having been retired for about two years from his active involvement in cricket commentary, cricket fanatics can still vividly recall his enthusiastic commentary, painting a clear picture for fans across the world for over half a century. Sasha Ramsam reporting for Channel 8 News.